it's Stephanie Kidd. I'm here today at KFA to talk to you about elapsed time and teaching time to students. One of these things that our special needs students have uh, a very hard time with, um, for lack of a better pun, um, they do struggle with telling time and with understanding how much time has elapsed. So I'm going to teach you a couple of strategies today that's going to help you to get through teaching time showing how the elapsed time works for a student and for them to understand the amount of time that has really passed. So let's get started. So we're going to first begin with our thing of just telling time. I would suggest that you print off some analog clocks if you don't have any and that you find you some brass button uh, fasteners and some scissors. So I have a Google Classroom that we are working with and it's a kind of a Bitmoji classroom. And you can actually um, just send me an email and I will get back to you on that and we'll send that power or that Google slide to you so that you can go through to see all of our different resources that goes along with this. I'll also try to include some of those down in the description. Um, but if I'm working with a lap, uh, telling time, I'm basically going to make sure that I have plenty of things that are available for my students to actually see, such as I want them to see um, the clocks. I, I need them to put their hands on them. I need them to make sure that they are touching them at all times and actually manipulating with the clocks. So an example of one of the clocks I've got laid out here on my um, whiteboard here, and that's one that we, we've seen very often. And if you notice, for many of our students, though, they have trouble because they don't understand the minutes that go around in the 60 minutes to make an hour. So some of the times what you can do is you can start with a clock that actually has those added to it. So maybe you want to start with a clock that looks like this, and then you can talk about, oh, look, one, two, three, four, five, and this is five minutes after your time. And so I talk to them about those kind of things, and I have little arms for them that actually reaches all the way out to the five minutes. And then I would have an arm that only reached out to the hour so that they can see that. And so this little arm would actually only reach out to the hour. So this is five minutes after three. Now, the great thing about having an actual clock that rolls around is you'll start to see when it's like 3.50, that, oh, it's not quite to the four. But guess what? And the kids will look at it and say, well, it's almost touching, it's touching the four, so it's 450. No, no, it's not to the four yet. It's not made it to the four and talk to them about that. Therefore, it's not four o'clock yet. So making sure that you have some conversations with your kids about time and trying different clocks out so that they can progress toward understanding the amount of time in an hour and then on to actually telling the time. And if you need to, this is a big, it just blows their mind. I don't, I don't know how many of you guys have had this issue, but quarter after, if you think quarter after, well, a quarter's 25. But when we talk about a quarter after, we're talking about 15 minutes. Why is that? And actually fold a clock so the kids can see one quarter, two quarters, oh, two quarters, is actually a half and then what what it is so and then of course 15 till or quarter till and a quarter after what that looks like on a clock and this one right here is really good and I'm putting that one also a link to that one in my Google classroom too um, I got most of these uh, from off of uh, Lakeshore's website and I also got some of them off of worksheet fun.com so they have some really good clocks and like I said they were free so those things are out there for you to be able to just to print off and use so don't be afraid to use these in your classroom or when you're working with kids and if we're doing the virtual world of course these can be sent home with the kids you're just losing a sheet of paper so um, having them to have these options for them to use and if I was working um, in a classroom, I may have a couple of these that are glued to foam, so they're a little bit more sturdy, and I can put the brad in it 
and then I can make sure that they're moving around easily. So that's what I want, wanted to give you some hints about with this one. Making sure that the kids have that ability to uh, do that. But first of all, um, tell kids that you're going to use a clock to play a game and they're going to, they're going to do it as a game. And it's a guessing game. And you can call on your students um, and have them to tell you what the minute hand is on. And so they'll just tell you what the minute hand is on and then what do you think that if that minute hand is where, what does that mean it's on? So and we can talk about counting by fives at this point and they can start counting up by fives. So if the minute hand's on the three, it's 15 after. If the minute hand's on the six, oh, it's half past, it's 30. And have them use all of that vocabulary in when they're doing their time. So just make a game out of it, have them to do those. Then talk about with if it's the, the shorter hand or the hour hand that is that time. If the hour hand is past the number, but not yet to the number, because there should be a, a darker line or a bigger line in this case, if we can see the bigger line or the darker line, that's the actual one hour in this case. But if it's right here, just before it, guess what? It's not one o'clock yet. So they have to remember that this space, and sometimes I would color code that, this space all in here goes to the 12. This space goes to the one. So color coding that space can also help and make sure you kind of remember that, that it's okay to color code. And so I would color code those so that they would remember that and then fade that color away. It's part of that, you know, fading away those, those options that we give them and color coding seems to be one of the things that we can do for specially designed instruction if taught well. Then we fade it away and then they're not using it anymore. That's a really good strategy to use. So like I said, for analog clocks, making it about they're playing with it at first, it's a game, counting, by, if the child can count by fives, that's awesome. If they're having trouble and they have to still go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's nine after, because they can't do five, six, seven, eight, nine, or if they know that one before is the 10 would be nine. Let them do that. That may be what they need to do for right now, but gradually get them to the point to where they're they're able to at least count by fives and then count on. And that's a big thing for counting with clocks. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about today is lapse time. That's the big one that we actually wanted to talk about. And with the lapse time, it's so important that our students remember um, that there's a starting time and an ending time and that there's 60 minutes in an hour and that they don't always have to go straight up by an hour. So the first thing I wanted to show you is the N. Now, I tell my students to make an N. And I try to use as much real life questions as possible. So one of the things that we use time in, of course, is baking. And so I would use, oh, last night I had to bake some cupcakes. And I wanted to, you know, I have to take these for a party that I'm going to. And I'm baking these cupcakes and I realized that, oh wow, I've got to time myself because guess what? It takes 35 minutes to make cupcakes. So if it, make, it takes 35 minutes to make cupcakes, then how much time is it going to take for me to make these cupcakes? Well, the problem was I whipped up my cupcakes and guess what? I turned on the the oven and I turned down to 350 like I said but I put the cupcakes in at 445. I've got to do 35 minutes. So how do I do that? And so for my kids I would talk about how much time has elapsed to get to five o'clock and they would be like oh well that's 45 they would be, they would count by fives, 45, 50, 55, and then 15 minutes, Miss Kid. It's three, it's 15 minutes. So this is 15 minutes. Now how much more time do I need from the 35? And so of course at that point, my students would be like, oh, I gotta take 15 from this 
And so they would do that, and they would be like, oh, well, we need another 20 minutes. And I'd be like, okay, so from five to what time is it going to take to get 20 minutes? So if I'm adding 20 minutes here, what time would that be? So from 5 to 5.20, and they may even need to go back and look at a clock at this point in time and say, okay, I'm at 5 o'clock, and they may need to move their minute hand 20 minutes, 5.20, okay. And so my answer is 5.20. Now, in this case, I didn't need the rest of my end, but there will be times where they may need the rest of their end, especially if there's multiple hours involved. And so what we can talk about that. Uh, when there's multiple hours involved. In this case, what I do is I take the time that we start, I get it to the next hour. So 4.45 to the next hour was 15 minutes. So I put that in, it's 15 minutes here. And then I know I need for my 35 minutes another 20. And so at this point I put it in, what time am I going to? 5.20. So let's do another one, and this one might be a little bit harder for our kids, and it may be what we want them to do as far as um, elapsed time. But here's one. I'm gonna go ahead and just move this one. Up. So let me use the top part of the paper here. Um, we have five Ks around here all the time. We typically don't have a marathon though. So, but we can talk about what's the difference between a 5K and a marathon if we needed to, to get the kids to be familiar with that. But we can say that our uncle wants to run a marathon and he's been trained for a while. And so if my uncle Jack wants to run a marathon and he thinks that he can run the marathon in two hours and 17 minutes, Okay, now this is this is what he thinks he can do. Two hours and seventeen minutes is what he's been training for. So if the marathon started at ten thirty, I'm gonna do this again with the end. At ten thirty, he needs two hours and fifteen minutes, right? Now. If it starts at 10.30, what does he need to do? What, what are we going to? Well, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the 11, which gives me 30 minutes, right? And I'm gonna write that right there. Now, one hour past that is what? Should I go one hour? Should I go two hours? Because that's gonna be two hours and 30 minutes, and then I have to backtrack. So you can talk to your kids about this. Now I could have went up 15 minutes and then done the two hours and I would only use part of my end. In this case, I'm going to do one more hour. So one hour is going to be 12. All right, so now I've got one hour here. So I've used one hour and 30 minutes. Now, if my kids are good, they know that wow, I have 45 minutes left because I've got 15 minutes I took off of this one and if that's the case I still had one more hour I've got 45 minutes left I'm going to go from 12 to 12 45 that's when he's expected to complete the marathon so he's expected to complete the marathon at 12 45 now, um, here's a good one for our kids. So, let's think about our kids and they've had a babysitter before and you're having to pay the babysitter by the hour but you don't know how much time she's been there. So, let's say that um, Mary is babysitting for us and she came at six o'clock. So she came at six o'clock to babysit. She didn't leave until 9.45. 
Now, we could actually make this 615 if we wanted to. Or actually, let's make it 545. This is better. Let's make this 545. And she left at 945. So how many minutes is it until 6? So we know that from 5.45 to 6, it is 15 minutes. I'm going to go to the time right before this, the hour right before this down here, which is 9 o'clock. So from 6 till 9 is 3 hours. And then from 9 to 9.45 is 45 minutes. For my students, I know it's 3 hours. 45 minutes, another 15 minutes, if I add these two together, they make 60, which is another hour, and I get to add that hour, so I am paying her for four hours of work. This is some of the ways that you can use the N, and I just wanted to make that available to you. For some of my kids, though, the backward N is not a possibility for them to use. So, there are wonderful, wonderful um, elapsed time rulers that are out. And like I said, that worksheet, uh, worksheetfun.com has some. But the thing about them is they're done in 15 minute increments. And that's great until it says, oh, well, they left at 7.59. Or they left at 7.57 or they left at 341 and then my kids are like what am i doing i don't remember how to do that and so this could be a little bit more difficult so what i tried to do is for my students is to create a number line for them with the clock and this is done in five minute increments and if you want this like i said all you have to do is just give me a call and or Give me, send me an email and I will gladly send this to you. And my email's at the end of this video. So if you, you want this number line, um, I just put it together. It's it's on paper and I laminated it kind of just to, so I can hand write on it um, or dry erase marker on it. And so that we can do that. Um, but for this one here, what I want is I want my students to be able to see the amount of time. So good example again we're going to go back to my cousin travis has a birthday party and it starts at 4 30. so if his birthday party started at 4 30 i'm going to come over here i'm going to find 4 30 and i'm going to circle it 4 30. and then his last guest left at 6 32. well we're going to say 6 30 and we're going to put two marks here and we're going to know that this is when they left. So this is the time I'm going to. So now how do I figure that out? So we know from this to this is a half hour or 30 minutes. Now I could do a full hour if I wanted to. And I'm going to show that down here. So you can see that. That's a full hour. This is one hour. Can I go another up to 30 to make another hour? Absolutely. There's another hour, and then I have two minutes. So it lasted two hours. You like how we can do those jumps? And two minutes. Break it down to what they know. And that's the reason why I said these rulers are awesome for that. They can break it down to what they know, and then you can transfer this information right to that end if you needed to. That way they start using the N and start to see that. But this is one way that they can do that. So this is Ethan's birthday party. Let's go back to the cupcake one. I don't remember exactly what I said about the cupcake one. But let's say that they're baking because guess what? Thanksgiving's coming up. And Thanksgiving's a good thing to have for baking and, or Christmas or Easter or any of those times that we get together for a party. So... And we could change it up for that. Mom has to put the turkey on. Uh, the turkey takes three hours to bake. And she started the turkey at, um, let's say she started the turkey at eight o'clock that morning. 
Or let's say she started at 820. 820. Now she ta we know it takes three hours. So if she started baking the turkey at 820, it takes three hours. If the student understands an hour and how that works, then they're going to go on up to the next 20. If they don't, you hear about missed it. 820, that's one hour. And they can write that on there. This goes right back to when they were jumping around with the um, adding 10, adding 10, adding 10, adding 10, adding 100, adding 100, those kind of things on a number line works the same way. Back up to the next 20. That's another hour. We said it's going to take three hours. We're moving on up to the next 20. What time is my turkey done? That's three hours. My turkey is done at 1120. We're going to be able to eat Thanksgiving dinner at 1120. Things like this helps our students. So, like I said, keep in mind when you're working with our students, having something that's broken down on their level and then teaching them strategies to go through to understand the problem. That's what we want you doing. So this is just another thing that you can use. Another manipulative, another type of thing to work with when we're working with the lapse time. Thank you and have a good day.